Hi, Redbox family. I just wanted to give you a quick update as to what we're facing going into market open tomorrow with Redbox. It could be an extremely volatile day, and I have two scenarios that I want to point out to you so that you're prepared for either one that happens and you can make a decision as to what's best for you. Remember, nothing I say is financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy, I'm not telling you to hold, and I'm not telling you to sell. Personally, I'm bullish as can be on this, especially going into next week. Today, I don't know. I'll have to watch to find out what my thoughts are. But um, I hope you all have a wonderful night. And please share this if you found the information valuable. And don't forget to watch the video that I'm going to be making next about what happened today with the CBOE being delisted for the options chain on Redbox. Just absolute crazy stuff, guys. Um, this is just reminding me of everything that happened with AMC and GME before we squeezed. Hopefully this is a good sign. Let's get into it. Just a quick update on the one year chart for Redbox. We're actually still in a really good pattern, guys. As you can see, we're continuing with this uptrend. Here we go. Higher high, higher low. This one didn't quite get higher, so it's still in the channel. Came back down, made a higher low, higher high, higher low. And now we're building back up to our higher high. Right here we have support at $10 and resistance at $13.20 on the one year chart. And we have VWAP around $11. As you can see, we have a lot of bullish signals right in this zone here. When you get the smaller moving averages crossing over the larger moving average, it's a very bullish indicator. Um, on This is the 200, the red here. And then when you see the purple and the blue, those are the 13 being the purple and the 20 being the blue. And both of those have now crossed above the 200 day moving average. Earlier in the week, we didn't have the cross yet on the 20. If I added the 10, as I had shown you previously, you would see that that had crossed over first. But now we have the 10, the 13, and the 20. Right here, this is my 48, which is almost equivalent to the 50 SMA. And you can start to see that now this has broken that resistance line and it's curling up and next week we're going to get a massive crossover when the 50 crosses over the 200 sma that's the golden cross right there that is where i think we're going to see massive amounts of volume come in and i don't want to call it a squeeze anymore let's call it hype Let's call it the retail hype play is going to start taking place because I think saying the word squeeze has different meanings for different people. If you were in the space call that we did last night, then you probably heard us discussing that. And I think it causes a lot of anxiety for newer traders. And I also believe that um, it creates fear to some degree because people don't realize what's happening. So let's call it the retail hype play. And we're going to get a lot of people that have been bearish and making negative comments on Redbox come flooding into this ticker. I assure you, when this golden cross starts happening and we start seeing very, very bullish price action, things are going to get wild. And people that were naysayers, they might not tell you they're coming in, but you better believe they're going to be trading this ticker because we're going to see massive moves to the upside, in my opinion. Not financial advice, but I can tell you what the chart shows. And guys, I've been saying this since way down here. Actually, I first told you about this ticker before this run-up even happened, but you guys probably were not even knowing who I was or following me on Twitter back then. But all of this and i saw all through the manipulation started way back here guys this is where the problem was way back here then you come in it goes from spac delisting that initial drop followed by the spike which real quick if you want a, a tip i'm going to tell you about a ticker that did just this today ggpi polestar 
the 22nd, I believe, is the shareholder vote, and that's when they're supposed to go um, from DSPAC into Polestar, which is what Redbox did from Seaport, right in here. So you saw that initial dip, followed by this initial run. Probably had a lot of shorts covering in this time. I was already in this play, guys. And then you saw a sudden drop. I'm telling you, it was very difficult to get shares. I had put in orders, even 50 cents above it, couldn't get filled. This is because there was all these massive shorts, I believe, in here that were trying to cover and no one was selling. So you just saw this thing rocket, which if you look, our high was over $27 here. We haven't even gotten to that point yet. So I don't even want to hear the word, you know, squeeze or whatever until we get through there and you know we just start flying and guys you'll know that this is a hype play because you're gonna start seeing jumps of like three to five dollars if this does what I think it's going to do and again there's many factors so I can't promise anything but this is what I'm seeing I think with all of the calls that are in the money tomorrow which by the way um, I did send out a treat warning you guys that $10, it, it may be where they try to get us tomorrow, which would be okay. I actually, I would be okay if we closed at 10 tomorrow, even though I'd love to see it go higher, but I have a feeling they're going to manipulate it even more than they already have because they have a ton of calls that are in the money already, which is why they stopped option trading, which I will cover in a separate video. Um, but if they hit $12, which is why you see this channeling today, because they're trying to take this down, and that's why you see it red. I believe that we should have closed green today, but don't worry about it. This is just one more day. Tomorrow's one more day, because we know what's coming. If it does dip down and we close around 10, which they're going to try to do, because that's where max pain is, um, unless that changed today, but I don't know. I mean, lots of brokers you can buy options on so it's possible it does but I just wanted to tell you that I see that warning technically though I see two things it could continue it came down it made on the on the one year chart this big big cup we're seeing right sorry so all the way when it went up here and it came down this is basically forming a cup now it could be forming a, a handle just right here. That could be the end of it. And we could start climbing up. That's one option. But sometimes when you see handles, they're not a straight line down and then continuing upwards. Sometimes you get a little chop in between and then the break. And the break sometimes is a pretty decent one because in order for it to really break past that cup, it has to get through the top of this wick here. Okay, so we got to get past the all-time high on Monday over that 18 and change before we start to see any major move. So tomorrow, if they do try to take us down to 10, which is a possibility, don't get scared because just wait until next week when all of those options that they're going to not be able to deliver because, guys, there's a liquidity crisis here. They don't just close the option pool for nothing. But again, we'll discuss that in another video. But I, I just want you to see how great of a play that this is, you know, from the technical perspective of it, because it's actually following an amazing technical chart and it's beautiful. It's just really beautiful. I think, um, I think next week though, guys, is when we get that big move in my honest opinion. And I'll always keep it real with you. I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. I don't know if FOMO is gonna come running in because again, we're getting tons of people on YouTube talking about it. We're trending, you know, Google, it's going, we're Google trending up. People are starting to get to know what RDBX is, guys. Redbox Entertainment's a, a flag. People are watching, so it's only a matter of time. All right, I'm going to make another video to discuss with you about everything that happened today as far as my phone calls with CBOE, with Robinhood, getting hung up on multiple times, not being able to call them back, getting locked out of that feature. 
then contacting Fidelity and my conversations with them. Guys, you can't miss that video, so please go watch that next. I'm going to try to get them both uploaded for you tonight so you can watch it before market open tomorrow. But um, technically, we're still in a great place, and I think you'll be happy. Are you fucking kidding me? I just talked to myself.